And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We're here to speak to you about your life, your money, and your investments. And as always, we're coming to you from the spiritual and soon-to-be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at Lighthouse with an L, lighthousecapital.co.il. That's Aaron at lighthousecapital.co.il. You can check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. That's www.aaronkatzman.com. Be sure to follow me on both Twitter and LinkedIn and subscribe to the brand new YouTube channel. You don't want to miss the YouTube channel. We're like rocking and rolling on YouTube. So we've got a really interesting show today. Um, It's for people who live in Israel. It's for people who are thinking about moving to Israel. It's about healthcare in Israel. It's my honor to introduce Ayala Laub, who is the director of the Shira Pransky Project. She has nearly a decade of experience in nonprofit programming and management. In addition to her leadership and organizational experience, she is an expert in Israeli healthcare rights with a particular love of women's and maternal health. As director, Ayala is passionate about the Shira Pransky Project's mission and oversees all organizational programs and development. Ayala, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. I appreciate that. So let's just dive right in and sure. tell us what is the Shira Pransky Project? Sure. So the Shira Pransky Project, basically what we do is we educate and assist um, immigrants in both understanding um, their rights and benefits in the Israeli healthcare system and also accessing those benefits, actually getting the medical care they need on time. Um, I'm sure anyone who has made Aliyah knows that while the Israeli healthcare system certainly offers a lot of rights and benefits between the language barrier and the cultural barrier and the fact that it's just a new system, a lot of times immigrants in particular struggle with actually getting what they need, they miss out on a lot of benefits due to ignorance. Um, and so we wanna solve that and prevent that from happening to you. And how do people go about doing that, right? Do you do you have like an information database um, where yeah. people can get, you know, where they can yeah, so get we, the information? Yeah, sure. So we go about it in a few different ways. Um, the first is like you mentioned the information database. So we basically, in addition to on our website and in conjunction um, with Kol Svut, which is a very prominent website in Israel, we have over 700 pages of translated um, healthcare and medical related rights and materials. Um, so if you go onto the Kol Svut website and you click on English, everything in there is the Shira Pransky Project's translation and it's all somehow related to healthcare. Um, in addition to that, we have a couple other programs. One of them is our educational workshop program where we go to different communities in Israel, pre-Aliyah, post-Aliyah, that type of stuff. Um, And we, I mean, our most popular workshop is called Israeli Healthcare 101. It's literally just like, these are the basics. This is what you need to know, (laughs) learn the terms. Um, And then then our, our probably most significant program is our personal assistance program where you could actually contact us and a healthcare advisor will get back to you and give you all the information, send you the links to the relevant um, you know, guides or translations, and then also walk you through the steps of how to actually you know, get that appointment, get that reimbursement, all that stuff, and kind of hold your hand if you need it. Um, I know a lot of people who, who um, have been here for a long time and um, have elderly parents uh, who've moved uh, to the country as well. And it's really, really challenging. Uh, you know trying to, to, to figure out what rights they have, whether it's from Bituach Lumi and how that whole system works and the points and the money. Can you talk a little bit about how you help people in that kind of a situation? Yeah, for sure. So definitely someone in that situation, we really encourage you to contact us six months before um, the person's coming to Israel, um, especially when you're dealing with elderly parents. Basically how it usually works, particularly when you're dealing with the older population um, is we'll usually have you email us. And then we ask you, you know, for some details, do a little intake, stuff like that. And the main things that we're going to go through with you, or we're going to explain to you, let's say the coupon holium, how to choose that, all that type of stuff, any additional insurance. And the biggest thing that we do for senior citizens is um, assist them with medications. Um, It's very challenging to sometimes to transfer over your medications from to Israel, um, mostly not because there's not medication here. There is. No one should think that they're going to come here. (laughs) We have have no pills in Israel. We're (laughs) we're an advanced country. We have medications. We have a good healthcare system. Um, But oftentimes 
Um, the medications that are covered here are slightly different than what's available, let's say in America, and the process of how to actually get them covered is different. So definitely for our senior citizens, um, we spend a lot of time doing that. And then of course, you know, when it comes to p 2 f me applying for, you know, whether it's disability or CUD or anything like that, we'll explain to you what the process is. Okay. Um, but definitely if you know someone who has elderly parents coming, it's really best to contact us in advance because you don't want to find all this stuff out when you show up. So um do you do you also like advocate for 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 the patient so to speak one of the big things for, for people when they're in a hospital here it's hard enough if you're an israeli but if you're sort of uh, uh somebody who's immigrated here and you don't really speak the language and you god forbid have to go to a hospital it can really really be challenging yeah it's a huge it's a huge huge challenge um it's definitely a part of what we do it's not as much of a part of what we do right now just because of corona and um, we are a little bit more limited in our resources. Um, but certainly, you know, if someone is in a situation where they've been, I mean, we, and this is also particularly with the elderly population, um, you'll have people who kind of are just banging their head against the wall, just trying to speak to someone at the hospital. So certainly we'll step in there um, and talk to them. A lot of our goal though, is to give the people the tools before they're in that situation to know what to do. And then for people who are still stuck, then we'll step in and, and advocate for them for okay. sure. Uh, you mentioned uh, the magic word, uh, Corona. Mm -hmm. I, a question I always ask guests is how has Corona impacted uh, their organization? Um, I'm really curious how Corona has impacted your organization. Yeah, I mean, Corona, it's, it's something. You know? <laughs> um, first of all, as a nonprofit, we got hit pretty hard. Um, a lot of just how philanthropy was working has, has changed. Obviously, people, when they have less money, are sometimes more hesitant to give donations. Foundations change their priorities. So we really got hit pretty hard um, from a financial perspective, which is a huge challenge. Um, obviously, businesses, of course, that are for profit have this, you know, similar challenges. But as a nonprofit, you know, we, I never charge the client for any of our services. So we, you know, have to raise funds elsewhere. And that was definitely hard. Um, the, the biggest shift, though, I would say in terms of Corona is actually um, the percentages of how our inquiries are broken down. Pre-Corona, actually only 10% of our inquiries were pre-Aliyah. And since Corona started, that actually jumped up to 25% of our inquiries. Wow. Um, now that people, I think, are getting a little, we, they were getting a little nervous. And then I think in addition to that, Corona has kind of showed all of us how hard it is when you don't understand what's going on in a health related situation. And so those questions definitely became more prominent at the forefront of people's minds, a lot of insurance questions, things like that. Um, and that's really, I think, the biggest effects of Corona for us. Um, Ayla, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, so you can email us at info at shirapranskyproject.org. Want me to spell it out for you? Um, it's in, <laughs> info we'll put it on the notes. It'll be on the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put it on the thing. It's a long, it's a long title. But you email us at info at shirapranskyproject.org. You could also visit our website, shirapranskyproject.org. There's a contact form there. You can browse our website, see if maybe you get the answers there just by looking. Um, and we also have um, a Facebook page and a Facebook group called Navigate the Israeli Healthcare System, which I really encourage people to join. It's a crowdsourcing group with almost 3,000 members. Um, we moderate the group and obviously answer questions that either have not been answered or have been answered incorrectly or anything like that. Um, but it's really a good place also, you know, as an organization, I can't give a recommendation of a doctor, but certainly people in the group can. Um, What's the name of the group again? What's the name of the Facebook? Navigate the Israeli Healthcare System. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, we're actually in competition with uh, who's got the longer, uh, is Lighthouse Capital longer than the <laughs> Transy Project? We're going to have the letters yeah. and see. Um, yeah. You are tuning into the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. He speaks about your life, your money, and your investments. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron at lighthousecapital.co.il. That's Aaron at lighthousecapital.co.il. You can check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. That's www.aaronkatzman.com. Be sure to follow me on both Twitter and LinkedIn and subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. So we're speaking about the Shira Pransky Project, which is a nonprofit um, organization which helps people um, navigate the Israeli healthcare system. Right, I did that okay? That just came right off the top. I didn't have that written down even. I just like, wow. You're great. No, you're great. You can get on quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, tell us a little bit more, maybe in more depth about um, the biggest challenges you see when it comes to people who have been living here for a while, Olim, um, and where they tend to most get stuck or tripped up in the Israeli healthcare system. Okay, so you're not talking about people who are coming here, you're talking about people who people are- People already... actually here, yeah. So the people can come and have what to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the, the place where people um, get really stuck. Well, first of all, I we always find it's actually interesting that so many of the people who contact us have actually been here for 20 plus years. You know, you would think, oh, being here so long, you'd catch on. Um, but really what we see happens is as people get older and medical things become more complex, suddenly you're now faced with these issues that you've never had before. So while it could be simple when you're younger, oh, I go to my family doctor and I go to the dermatologist once a year or anything like that. Suddenly now when you're dealing with hospitals, um, referrals, a lot more, um, which is a payment stub, which is when the HMO has to pay for you to get either treatment or a diagnostic test outside of the Kupa or the HMO. Um, when those get involved, I think people start to really struggle. Um, and, and especially, you know, if they're rejected by the Kupa, there's a process of applying to get these payment stubs that sometimes you're rejected. And more often than not, it's a technical thing that was filled out incorrectly. But when you don't know that, it kind of freaks you out and becomes overwhelming. And I think a lot of people's first instinct is to just run and make a private appointment and pay a lot of money privately. Right. Um, and you don't need to do that. There's really, there's no, I mean, obviously there are times where private insurance comes in and supplemental insurance through the coupon is a great benefit and really useful, but really you're entitled to care. <laughs> They're supposed to pay to give you what you need. Um, and that's really where I find we're helping people who have been here a while. You know, the people who now are getting older suddenly need an MRI, don't know how to get one. They've been rejected by the Kupa to have it covered. They, we finally help them get it covered. It's a six month wait for an appointment. They're freaking out. And then they talk to us and most of them have an appointment for an MRI within a few weeks. Wow. I'll just yeah. tell you from personally, it, it's just intimidating. Yeah. Right. You know, if you need something that's like sort of not basic, that you can't yeah. go to the app and make an appointment for directly. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I would rather just, God forbid, suffer than have to make up another call and you call the, right. the, the operator and then you have to get a fax. And it, it really is like a lot to get your hands around. Yeah, for sure. So a few things on that. The first thing is don't call the operator, call your branch secretary. Don't waste your time with the operator. It's waste your time, call the branch secretary. The second thing is that tell if someone ever tells you a fact something, just remind them that it's the law now that you should be able to email to them. So uh, in case they forgot. But while you're saying that, it just reminds me of this story that I always tell that, you know, we had someone who spoke to us and this happens frequently. And we said, you know, go to your secretary and this is your right and this is how you get it. And she said she went into the office, went to the secretary, said, oh, I'm supposed to get this, that X, Y, Z. And the secretary looked at her and said, end up out because there's no such thing. And she left. And we're like, no, 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 that's your mistake. Welcome to Israel. When the secretary says this doesn't exist, it means she doesn't feel like doing it right now. So go back and ask her again and it'll be taken care of. But that's like, to your point of that it's intimidating. And if you don't, if you're not comfortable culturally or with the language, you know, it's, it's a lot of effort and it takes a lot of effort on the part of the patient, you know, to make these calls. Right. This is amazing. So anybody who's got who, who lives here already or is thinking about coming, the Shira Pransky project is for you, right? Because you're going to have health issues, right? And like I just admitted, right? It's really complicated. It's really complicated. It's really intimidating. And uh, you want to reach out to the Shira Pransky project. There's no question about it. They're the ones who are going to help, help you navigate. And they've got all these kinds of resources. So I allow once again, um, how can people get a hold of you and mention again that Facebook group? Because I think that's really, really great uh, resource. Yeah, for sure. So anyone who wants to contact us, you can email us at info at shiropranskyproject.org. It's .org, not .com, remember that. Um, you can visit our website, shiropranskyproject.org, and we have a contact form there in addition to a lot of resources on the website. Um, and as you said, we have, in addition to our Facebook page, we have a Facebook group called Navigate the Israeli Healthcare System. Request to join, we'll add you. Um, and there's a whole network of like 3,000 people who are just also trying to figure out the system and want to help each other and give each other resources and recommendations. It's a great group to be a part of. That's great. You know, the, the traditional sort of is one, one of the traditional Israeli greetings when, when, when they say bid farewell to somebody is rock you. You should have just health. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's a great blessing to give people. But if they, if they stumble and they don't exactly have health, you're definitely the people to, to, to contact. Yes. So I want and to also even 
you are healthy, I just want to say that, you know, if you are coming and you have a family, anything that even if you guys are healthy, it's worthwhile to contact us because there are lots of benefits even for healthy people and just getting through the system for families that there's no reason you should miss out on them. So. That's great. Ayala, yeah. thanks so much for, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You've been tuning into the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We speak to you about your life, your money, and your investments. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at lighthousecapital.co.il. Be sure to check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. Follow me on both Twitter and LinkedIn, and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.